battle for first place in the NFC North at Lambeau Field. The teams on the bye this week, guys, are Chicago, Indianapolis, uh, Oakland, and Buffalo. All four of those teams, guys, are all have winning records. Their next opponents uh, in will be then again in week seven, and they'll be uh, the Bears will play the Saints, the Colts will play the Texans. The Raiders will play at Green Bay, and the Bills will play at home against the Miami Dolphins uh, next week. So uh, that is that. So let me go ahead, guys. Uh, let's see. I had somebody. Let's see here. Waiting for your approval. Be in 15 minutes, as you can tell. Okay, suppose we got, uh, okay, I'm not going to have to try to go on here. You can see I don't see the, the friend request on here. Guys, supposedly my uh, guest wife is trying to friend request me on Facebook, but I don't see it. So I'm just going to have him call in uh, with the number there. Um, but let me go back. Uh, let me go back, guys, and see if I can pull up kind of the the preview for the NCAA uh, this week coming up. Um, let's see here. So, guys, sorry that I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. I'm trying to... Trying to pull up the games from this week. Probably should have jumped. Probably should have did this before I did this. But let me. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and pull up the top 25 here uh, for this week from ESPN.com. Again, guys, it is still four to one in the top of the fourth inning. Uh, the Astros have four runs on five hits. Rays have one run on two hits uh, so far uh, in the game. Um, again, guys, I'm still waiting on the uh, my guest. On it'll be 8:30. Uh, he just told me before that it'll be a little bit closer to 8:30. Uh, here are some games that are coming up. Uh, we have two games tomorrow night. We have number 20 Virginia traveling to Miami to play the Hurricanes. Um, and Colorado will travel to play the Oregon Ducks tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Um, on Saturday, South Carolina will head to Georgia to play the number three Bulldogs. The Red River rivalry will happen, guys, at noon as Oklahoma will play Texas. Michigan tries to stay on track, guys, as they head to Illinois uh, to play the Illini in Champaign. Um, number 23, Memphis, um, will... Um, travel. They'll be in Philadelphia at Lincoln Financial Field to play the Temple Owls. Um, Alabama will travel to College Station to play Texas A&M. Uh, of course, that is Nick Saban and uh, heading to, to, to College Station. Um, that should be interesting. Florida State travels to play the Clemson Tigers uh, this week in Clemson at Memorial Stadium. Michigan State Coming off the loss to Ohio State doesn't get any easier as they go to Madison to play the Badgers. Uh, Washington State uh, heads to number 18, Arizona State. Uh, Number 25, Cincinnati will head to Houston. Uh, Texas Tech will head to Baylor to play the number 22 Bears. Uh, USC travels to South Bend to play the Irish. Uh, Number 10, Penn State will head to Iowa City to play the Iowa Hawkeyes. Number 17. Louisville will travel to Winston Salem to play the number 19 Demon Deacons. Uh, Florida will travel to Death Valley to play 
the LSU Tigers as number seven plays number five. That'll be an eight o'clock kickoff. Um, Utah will travel to play the Beavers in Oregon State at eight o'clock. Ten fifteen, Hawaii will travel to Boise, Idaho, to face the undefeated Boise State Broncos. And that is the kind of the top twenty-five scoreboard in college football. Uh, and that's pro, that's NFL, and it also is that. Um, but again, guys, I'm again. If you see me turning, I'm watching the the game. Uh, my guest will be joining me here momentarily uh, on an interview basis. Again, the guy's name is Stephen Gray. Uh, he will be joining me uh, to talk about his days playing with the Rowdies and the Lightning, a minor leaguer. Uh, we will talk about that uh, moving forward. Um, anybody else has anything they want to talk about, hit me up in Facebook Live or on TalkShoe. Uh, you can go there. Um, I do have Adam, but I got to hold up, buddy, because I uh, I can't really answer the phone right now because I got a guest coming on. So just hold up, but I'll get to you. I know we like to talk, so I'll get to you uh, in a few minutes. But I can't really do anything right now because I'm expecting a, a call here in the next few minutes. Um, again, guys, it is still 4-1 to one in the top of the fourth. Um, there's one guy on first base, and that bat is uh, Javier Garcia. Um, the Astros pounced early on the Rays. Alex Bregman had a two-run double um, as the Astros did score four times. Um, so that, again, is that surprisingly in the MLB, guys, last night the Los Angeles Dodgers losing to the Nationals. Um, that's a shocker, guys. That's a shocker. Um, but um, there's going to probably be some house cleaning. Any Dodger fans out there? will tell you that there could be some house cleaning in L.A. Um, because of the recent struggles. The Dodgers have made it to the last two World Series prior to this year, losing to the Houston Astros and then losing last year to the Boston Red Sox. Um, but now, you know, they they uh, there might be some house cleaning. Uh, oh, and the Lightning just scored again. Kucherov has his second goal. Now they're up five to three. Or it's Braden Point, one of the two. Point just came back from injury, um, so that's pretty good. Um, again, guys, I apologize. I didn't print out my notes today. Uh, like I said, I'm um, getting ready uh, to get out of here. I will not be here next week. I will not be on here next week. Uh, so there will be no show next week because I will not be in – I will not be here uh, on my computer, um, but um, we can go ahead and talk about, I didn't get to this topic, guys, last week, um, about Robin Lanier, who is a goaltender in the NHL. Um, now, guys, he played, he's uh, been in the league for nine years. Um, he... Um, played with the uh, New York Islanders last year. Prior to that, he was in Buffalo. Um, he has struggled, guys, with ADHD and alcoholism most of his career. Uh, but he's been able to overcome those demons. And if you have got a chance to watch him in his early days um, with the Sabres, he, he had a little bit of what they call an anger problem. And he... Uh, yeah, it wasn't good for him. Uh, he he had some issues um, that that is, but uh, I did get to I went, tried to get to this topic a few days ago. Um, he was talking. I'm gonna go through this second period fuzzy, and I battled the scoreboard clock was ticking down so slowly. I just went back to the locker room. Zero finally hit. I walked back and sat in the trainer's room. Really get my gear off. I broke down. I was having a major flu bone panic attack. I thought I was suffering from a heart attack. I had no idea what was happening. I could not go back on the ice. Others and trainers were able to calm me down. Chase Portelli came down from the press box to check on me. He was pretty concerned. Um, strained mentally. Everything hurt on my way home. I did not. Did, I did the one thing that was common for me. I stopped to grab a beer. And went home and drank and drank. I finally woke up with my wife in the middle of the night and said, 
the five words I never had the courage to say I had to go away. Uh, with those words, I go back to that dark place I talked about, uh, self-medication, thoughts of suicide. Um, so again, guys, th- he was struggling from that. He said, I took settled demons on mine and then I took pills to sleep, self-treating. I could not uh, be inside my own head. So close to that weeks before the game in March. So it was a lawyer. And I realized when I told my wife that night, she was happy. My wife had tried so many times in the past to make me stop and wanted me to get help. I never wanted to listen. Uh, so was so scared for me while I had been thinking about suicide. She had been witnessing the process right in front of her for years. Uh, what a terrible thing. Um, finally, it didn't matter. I was going to go to rehab and get rehab for myself and my family. I had done it in my life and made me feel like a true man. The call has made me back to the program. Couldn't wait more in uh, Arizona. Uh, so I was set Arizona to one of the best treatment centers in North America for addiction and trauma. In the airport, ready to fly, I sat by myself with a hoodie over my head, drinking beers. At the point, I thought I had two options. Get on the plane and do this or end this once and for all. I got on the plane. When I arrived, I put in, was put into a small room to help sober up and wean everything out of my body. Besides the drinking of the pills that I mentioned, I had been taking sleeping pills to sleep almost every night for seven years. My detox lasted three weeks in that room. I was told my detox was one of the worst that they had ever seen. I had not honest sleep so long and mine was shocked. I was hallucinating, fighting, uh, fighting uh, extreme vivid dreams. I was stuck in a constant state of REM sleep and the dreams kept waking me up and making things worse. Sleep was only in short spurts. I was truly living on autopilot for three weeks in a constant fog. Complicated growing up. Family surrounded me with stress of addicts and other nefarious people on a day-to-day basis. Five weeks in treatment, I was diagnosed with bipolar. One with manic phases. So reason... For a long time, I always lived in extreme mental manic and hyper manic and depressed. Um, my ego thrived and my personality changed. I thought the best for everything. Um, then the other extreme was depression. That was total hell. The Meadows in Arizona helped map out my life and something I had never had the courage to do. Hello, Kelly. Uh, life goes does go on living without being around one of the hardest things now getting back into hockey addict that was diagnosed as bipolar and ADHD with PTSD and trauma I had never had a sober season of hockey my entire career with those manic swings I could see the pattern when I was uh, hypomaniac and in a good mood I was a solid goalie the depressive state not so much but now there's a new reality I could focus on my career during this whole process our gym in Buffalo was so incredibly supportive. Through this change of scenery. The scary thing is, I wanted horrible. Never got the offer to learn my faith before. Got a call from Luna Morello of the Islanders. Two great meetings and had to be back. These became some of the best moments in my life. We talked about family and my founders ready to take a chance on me or leave that I could start a new chapter. I was finally off with the deal. I was so happy. I finally had something who believed in me now sober. The one thing that's still making me nervous was the bipolar. See, I didn't understand why I was so ashamed to sing when I lost my job. Talk about this. With management, to my surprise, they were accepting, knowing I was still needing more help at certain times. My last GM checking in on me, the new one working with me, I finally began to find a place in comfort to make a mistake. Uh find to make everything go away excuse me i'm truly ready to battle now i cannot say enough about the nhlpa nhl since abuse program i don't think i would be alive without them it's important to know i am not blaming any of my actions in the past or my conditions or diagnosis i take ownership of what i have done i've let myself become what i was what i was earlier okay guys so basically what it is is he's kind of 
bounce back uh, from 88 